Okay, what we're looking at here is uh, the bulkheads for a trough, uh, sort of hot water here, parabolic trough. Um, the little black circles with a center punch, uh, I intend to drill those, and then I got one of those uh, electric uh, metal shears. Now I'm going to cut a slot down between the tabs. Uh, we'll also drill the holes in the tabs uh, before we bend anything. There's a red line, and there's another piece of, uh, of a drawing here that will cut out a template of that red line. That red line is the uh, back side of the tab. So what you do is you, is you clamp the metal plate to the, uh, uh, to the we call it a buck, <laughs> and uh, when you strike it, you don't just get out there and bend it over. You want to hit it near that uh, the crease line because you want to have a sliding blow. Drag the hammer off of the plate so it slides across it as you hit it. And that'll stretch it around the corner with no kinks, bends. Won't, uh, won't buckle the plate up anywhere. Uh, There's a zoom on this. This is supposed to be. Well, I know there's one on the camera. There's one on this gimbal too. It's it ties into all the electronics on the camera if you know how to use it. Apparently I don't. There's people who make one of these videos every day, and they really know how to use this stuff. Okay. We printed one. Eh, well, let me throw this one out of the way. So now we're going to select uh, print. That's a little typewriter looking thing with a paper sticking out. And all the settings are be the same because we haven't uh, moved anything. Haven't turned the computer off is basically what it means. And then we'll get this thing up. And we have margin all around it. Scan. Instant progress bar. I was expecting a fight with the paper roll, but uh, first time I got it near it, it fell in there, and I thought it hadn't made it, so I took it back out two more times. It went in every time, just as fast as you could let go of it. That doesn't happen. Oh, uh, a correction on the paper. Those rolls are not a six inch diameter roll of paper. They're about a three or three and a half inch diameter roll. There's four of them in a box. It's like a case. When this thing sneaks around to where you can see it. The uh, edges of these uh, bulkheads get 90 degree flanges bent on them. We call that a, a break in them. You, you break an edge. Um, I don't know what they call it when you're not building airplanes. We call it break in the middle. Um, and that gives you a flange that you can uh, drill through the side uh, piece, whatever you're using for a side piece, and uh, stiffen it all up. In other words, the bulkheads attached on the entire perimeter. There's numbers on there. This one is coming up right now is number four. 
Um, that's because uh, the three lines near the edge of the paper, one uh, is a, a merge line and the other two were just two different colors. So you take uh, the edge of the other half of four and lay it on that. And uh, that, that matches it up where you can put a, a cellophane tape down it. Now the next step uh, uh, on, the, on the full scale paper patterns is to uh, wallpaper paste it onto uh, whatever you're going to cut, you know. Uh, she'll put it on the wood, the plywood that's uh, we got here hiding in the kitchen. Uh, but these are going to be cut out of stainless. Um, as well as the reflective surface on the trough. Now I got another drawing to print, but I'm not sure where I've, which I've, I have to put it on this flash drive. It's quicker than finding it on the flash drive. There's, you know, 60 some gigabits of stuff on that flash drive. Anywho. Uh, these are both going to be stainless. The other, the other drawing I got to print is a. Uh, it's like when you're making a concrete flower pot or something. You have a shaped thing that you slide around on an axle, and it it, uh, it scrapes off everything that's not flower pot. And uh, you do it the first time to get the uh, the inside shape of the fire, flower pot, and then you either have another template or you uh, you move that template out at 45 degrees to the thickness of the pot. And and then you put con or you put something some kind of release agent on your on your first uh, basic pattern. Uh, if you, like if you finished it with uh, plaster, then you would put on like WD-40 or something. And then you put the concrete up there and wipe it off, and you got a flower pot. Uh, two to three sands for for one bag of cement. Three works fine. You can go to four, uh, especially if you're gonna uh, uh, put some kind of finish on it. Uh, like skim coat or paint or epoxy. And you can see coming, it's been coming by here now. Uh, this bulkhead is, uh, is, is uh, one piece on the drawing. The other ones are cut in pieces uh, just to conserve paper. I hate to have a bunch of, a bunch of blank space on a paper. get this out of the way. Oh golly, I took my shirt off. <laughs> well, the secret's out. I thought I was going to be sweating trying to do that uh, changeover. Picture. Yeah, the fat guy walked in front of the camera. Big mistake. Let's see here. More of a preview of what's going to happen. Um... Yes, I'm wasting paper on both ends of everything. I'm just struggling with the um, changing the paper size. And tonight I want to do the printing while I got all these plugs and cords all hooked up. So I, I use the paper for something. Scratch paper, make lists on whatever. It doesn't cost any more than any other bond paper. It's just that uh, I have to, to go find some place I can buy it when I need it. Uh, last time I bought uh, five cases of it, so I've still got a full case and three rolls in the uh, one I just opened. 
So that's a near lifetime supply. We bought a whole stock of uh, the ink cartridges. There's like four ink cartridges in this one. Maybe it's five. The dye sub has six because it's got cayenne and another color in there in the mix. Hey, what this thing is, it's uh, to make a parabolic, uh, uh, circular parabolic antenna for uh, Wi-Fi. The deal is you uh, go over to your sand pile and you drive a piece of rebar in the ground and this pattern will have a, a piece of pipe uh, bolted to it to, like, to fit over the rebar. And uh, you drag it around and knock worse the sand out of the way. And then you put a spacer under the pattern to raise it up a little bit. And uh, you can put concrete or uh, a gypsum plaster or whatever you want on it. And that will let you strike off uh, a nearly perfect surface uh, for your uh, parabolic antenna. And it, because you're working from the, the working surface each time, when you put fiberglass on that, uh, on that pattern, it's exactly the same shape as this drawing in the computer. Um, written on this one, this is a uh, 5 foot diameter, 60 inch. Actually, it's 59.987 or some mess like that. Um, I don't know why it's not exactly right. 20, the radius is 29 point something coming up. 29.96, whatever. Um, focal height is 16.4 inches on this. Now, if you don't know where the focal point on your parabolic uh, reflector is, uh, you take a, uh, a a mirror like you have in uh, makeup purse kits and things like that, a little small piece of mirror, and you slide it along the dish. Wherever you slide it, it's going to try to go through that focal point. So uh, if you have a piece of paper or something up there, uh, better yet a piece of metal, because paper will just blame catch fire as soon as it hits it. Because um, it's going to concentrate it, uh, I don't know, 7,000 to 1. Um, anyway, you, wanna, you want to position your, uh, the, the sensor that you're going to catch the, the uh, Wi-Fi signal with. Where, wherever you slide that mirror on the surface, it's on the center of, of, of your uh, antenna. Uh, if, it, if it's not on the center, then uh, you just wasted a bunch of materials because only the part that hits the antenna does you any good. Uh, I know they mount them off to the side and tilt the antennas, but a lot of the signal uh, doesn't ever hit it when you do that. Or else it's not a parabola. You, it's some kind of another shape. I, I, I can see and see any kind of shape to, to make it all hit, but why would you bother when you can make it uh, a parabolic shape in the first place? So this is going to mount off of uh, three pieces of half-inch rod off the rim, and uh, I'm going to use one of those... Uh, uh, 5G uh, antennas that you uh, plug into your laptop for Wi-Fi goes into the USB socket on uh, on a laptop or a desktop computer, and you get a 25 foot or whatever extent. I think they only come in 25. You can put two of them together. More you put, the worse your signal is. But be, being we're we're multiplying it by 7,000, I think you can afford to lose a little bit. Okay. Uh, there's no use. Uh, just running this on uh, and you know I'm just going to turn it all off we got another six pages to print but uh, it, it won't it's, it's all it's just more of the same you set it the same you should change your paper size and if the software was working right you can change it but I can't overwrite a size that's in it so uh, I did manage after 45 minutes to make it into a 76 uh, and that's what we printed the other ones with. And this one, uh, I need one longer one, but I think I'll probably, uh, I'll probably just print, let's cover half of it up and pr print a bottom and a top. Just uh, waste some paper. And the, oh, the other, the other ones I got to print other than the, uh, the parts for the, for parabolic water heater is uh, two smaller scale uh, parabolic round antennas, one three foot and one four foot. Uh, the ones I have from DirecTV from the States here, 
they're two and a half feet by about one and a half. They're uh, um, elliptical. And they mount the uh, um, the receiver. It's got three. It's got a sender and two different kinds of receivers. Because you have a television signal, you have a Wi-Fi signal, and then you have a transmit where you send it uh, back to the satellite up in space someplace. So it's got three of those heads. On. Well, wait, why, why explain it? We've got one right here. Don't walk in front of the camera. It's bad enough we've got one old person on the thing. Now if we just tilt it down. We're not going to do any weed killing in the next five minutes. I'll just move that. Okay. The, the, the one on the right, uh, that sends a signal out to outer space. On the left, you have a big one and a little one. The big one's your Wi-Fi, and the little one is uh, your television. And these three things uh, uh, went to a... Uh, oh, it's like a modem. Don't know what they look like. It's it's just a, a it just uh, uh, lets you enter a uh, a signal code so they know you're you're paying for the signal. Um, we're going to put a couple dishes up for for the place we actually live, and then probably one out at the farm, so we can take the computer out there. Uh, we don't hardly ever use the computer while we're working. Anyway, I'm going to carry this thing uh, because I have the antenna that goes with it. And the only way I can figure that that works, I mean can work, is uh, the elliptical shape uses a round section on one side for one and a round section on the other side for the other two because they're pointing at two different places on the uh, dish. And I don't want to get into that uh, when I can just sweep a flower pot shaped like a parabola. And I can also make bird baths or whatever out of it. Uh, or watering uh, pots for our uh, turkey population. Of course, they'll stand in it and crap in it. It's like the ducks. They, they, they can't get a drink unless they walk right up in it and crap in it before they leave. You, you waste more water cleaning the uh, equipment than you do feeding them. All right. I'm going to turn this off. That's a threat. Maybe it's going to be a promise.